Hello everyone. This time around, I want to talk about the notion of societal equality. Uh, that is how society uh, treats people and the notion that people should be equal. Now there's two types of equality that could come into play here. First is equality of outcome and the second is equality of opportunity. Now first I'm going to talk about equality of outcome. The notion there is that you end up, if you take two different, two different groups of people and you put them through some situation, you'll get exactly the same result at the end. So, uh, you know, that, that's a basic idea. Now, that really comes into play with things like affirmative action, which is bullshit, by the way. Uh, the idea behind affirmative action is that uh, you take some marginalized group and you set a quota that everybody has to meet to make sure that they're not being marginalized. Let's consider women in the uh, engineering. Women in engineering. Let's just pick on that one. Now, I haven't done any research on actual numbers here, so uh, this is just a hypothetical thought experiment type situation. Now, suppose you the people working in engineering, uh, you know, as the, the engineers, there are 80% of them are men and 20% of them are women. Okay, so you would look at that and go, well, that's obviously unbalanced because 50% of the population is men and 50% of the population is women. So there must be something that's keeping women out of engineering. And now, we're not going to bother figuring out why the women aren't going into engineering. No. Instead, we're going to ha have an affirmative action thing, and we're going to demand that... Uh, 50% of all new hires for as for engineers are women. And therefore, we'll have 50% of the engineers are women and 50% of the engineers are men in the law, in, you know, once this settles out. Well, there's a problem with that. One, it cannot work if you do not have applicants who are female. If 95% of your applicants are male, and 5% are female, there's no possible way you're going to fill a large number of positions with a 50-50 split. It's not possible because you don't have the applicants. The other absurdity here is if you have to fill one position, you need to hire one engineer, and you have 100 applicants, 99 men and one woman, and your current ratio is 80% men and 20% women because you have that one out of 100 applying that's female. You have to hire her whether she's qualified or not or whether or not one of the men is more qualified. And that's where affirmative action breaks. Because now you're hiring people who are either unqualified for the position and doing them a disservice by doing that, I might add, because you're setting them up to fail, yet you can't fire them when they do fail so they are not going to have job satisfaction and all of that, that stuff that people like to have. But you're also leaving qualified candidates even better qualified candidates on the table simply because they're male. And guess what? That is exactly what we're trying to fight against, but in the opposite direction. Uh, if you, you know, if you assert that women weren't getting hired uh, as engineers because they were women, well, you'd think that was absolutely ridiculous, right? But with affirmative action, you're flipping it on its head and basically saying if the person is not a member of that, that protected group that's supposed to be helped by the affirmative action, they can't be hired. 
you're actually going in the other direction. It's discriminatory in the other direction. So it, it definitely doesn't lead to, uh, you know, uh, a fair situation. Uh, so, and that's what equal equality of outcome leads to, like treating that as the ideal. If, however, you treat you you drop back to equality of opportunity. This is actually what we should be striving for because it actually rewards anybody for doing better. So what is equality of outcome? How does that, or not equality, so how does that differ from equality of outcome? Well, for equality of opportunity, all you need to do is remove all artificial barriers. So that would be things like not hiring someone as an engineer because they're female. That would also be not hiring someone as a nurse because they're male. You know, there are traditionally female fields where the discrimination goes the other way. It also means you're, you don't Pre, you don't prevent someone from doing something because they're black or Hispanic or uh, Chinese or white or purple from the planet Mars. It, it doesn't matter, right? Uh, what you need to remove the artificial barriers. Now, that is easier said than done. And it's going to be an ongoing struggle to achieve that. But simply um, trying to hire someone or in, in, let them into a program because they're a minority or something is exactly the opposite of removing artificial barriers because that puts up an artificial barrier for the people who aren't in that minority. So that means that we need to remove as much bias as we can in any selection process. Uh, that is how you remove the artificial barriers. Uh, so you need to come up with objective criteria for who qualifies for a particular scenario, whether it's a position in a course of study or a job or what have you. So that means you need to come up with some, some criteria that takes the bias out. Now, I should point out that it is not biased to exclude people who are not qualified to do the thing, that aren't qualified to take the course, that aren't qualified to do the job. For instance, firefighters need substantial strength so that they can actually rescue people, so they can carry them out of burning buildings. You cannot avoid that necessity if you're doing rescue work. And they're in a situation that is particularly uh, volatile and uh, critical, and they can't take time to go back out, get some widget to help them carry someone, go back in, and then carry them out on the widget unless they absolutely have to. They also have to be able to control a powerful jet of water coming out of a hose. Uh, and that requires strength. So, if, if you really think about it, it's not surprising that you would find the majority of firefighters would be men. But it is not discriminatory to not hire a woman as a firefighter if she cannot pass the strength requirements. As long as, if she does pass those requirements, you don't exclude her, right? So if she meets the requirements to do the job properly, in this case, as a firefighter, then you do not exclude her from consideration because she's female. Just like you would exclude a man who 
does not meet the minimum requirements to actually do the job. Uh, so it's not discriminatory to uh, exclude a non-qualified man from a job. Therefore, it should not be considered exclusionary or discriminatory to exclude a non-qualified woman from doing the job. It, and it goes the other way as well, you know, say in nursing or something like that. So it's perfectly reasonable that you could end up with a 90-10 split men to women in a particular set of of jobs and still not be violating equal opportunity. You won't get equality of outcome because people are not equal. Exactly the same is what I mean there. You, you Because people are not exactly the same, you will not get equality of outcome. Now there's another factor here as well, aside from just ability to do the job, there's also does a person want to do the job? And you can get a lot of artificial barriers coming up here as well. Um, say, poor workplace cultures and so on, uh, where, say, women are belittled or something like that or, or what have you. And, and obviously that's something that should be, uh, should be curtailed as much as possible that you know, a professional environment should be professional. That's perfectly reasonable. Although we do tend to take that a little too far these days where uh, it's impossible to sexually assault men, but uh, if men just blink at a woman, it's sexual assault or harassment or something like that. Uh, if you listen to the uh, victim types in the feminist world, uh, but well, that's a digression. Uh, where I'm going here is uh, you're not you're going to also skew your numbers uh, away from the, the desired potentially the, the, the desired e even split you get from equality of outcome if you consider what do the people want to do and that's an important point uh, you could have absolutely no socioeconomic barriers to entry into any uh, field. We don't have that. But say we did achieve that somehow. You could have that. And you still won't get equality of outcome. Because people want different things. And as long as you have a, an affluent enough society that you can uh, work on what people want instead of what society absolutely has to have. Uh, you know, as long as you don't have to force people to do things they don't want to do just so that the entire society can live and depending, and that can happen depending on specific circumstances. But let's look at things as they are, uh, you know, say in the current Western uh, world. Most people end up doing mostly what they choose to do. Um, or at least they can choose between uh, bad options in, in a lot of cases. Uh, that's not to say people aren't forced to take jobs they don't like just to make ends meet or something like that. But for the most part, people are able to make choices. Uh, so... I chose to study computer science in university, and I work in, uh, in IT, uh, and, and that is fine. This is, what I, this is basically what I wanted to do. I'm not doing quite exactly what I want to do, but I'm happy with what I do, and, and that's important. Uh, I'm working in the right field, and I get enough variety that I don't get bored for the most part, and that's... What, what more can you ask for, really? Um, but if someone came along and told me that uh, uh, because of uh, quotas, I had to, uh, I, I, I needed to uh, go into nursing, say, uh, when I was 17, I would not have been happy with that. I would not have been happy being told that I 
I, I should like nursing because we need more, more male nurses or something. Uh, that is ridiculous. Now, uh, you know, especially if we have enough people already going into nursing, say, or enough people already going into IT or whatever, uh, you know, why do we need to, to push people in a direction they don't want to go? So if, so like, and if you look at the, the narrative these days, it's basically that, uh, and, and this is a little bit skewed, but uh, the narrative seems to be that uh, a woman who wants to get married and have a family and stay home and raise the kids is somehow defective. And that's just wrong. Like, what's wrong with wanting to do that? If that's what she wants, what's wrong with it? Seriously. Um... Uh, and also, if she doesn't want to have kids at all and she wants to become the, a top engineer and so on, let her, let her take a crack at the education to do it. And if she succeeds there, fine. She can be an engineer, right? Uh, and it goes the same for men. Uh, if I want, wanted to be an engineer, I would have taken the, the necessary education and put in the time, and if I passed everything, succeeded, then I could be an engineer. Or if I wanted to uh, to uh, go into nursing, I would take the appropriate training and do that. I chose IT. I chose computer science. That's what I chose. Uh, it's perfectly reasonable to want to do something that isn't normal or isn't contributing to uh, some affirmative action goal. So, you know, trying, you know, we could try to force young girls to, uh, to do the science and technology and engineering and mathematics stuff and try to force them into that career path but they're not going to be happy with it if that's not where they want to go. Now, how much of what they want is uh, societal and how much is innate? That's still an open question to a large extent. But even if it is largely upbringing and there's enough evidence to suggest that there is a non social aspect to it that it isn't just the socialization of the the children that puts points them in particular directions but even if it is the only way to change that is to change the culture rather than try to force people to go in a direction that they don't want to go in and the only way to change that culture is to let the outliers who do want to go in the, those directions to go there without any interference or artificial barriers or excessive accolades for that matter going and you know you know, patting them on the head and going isn't it nice you went into science which is you know condescending cr crap right um so we need to avoid that, and we need to avoid treating the, the outliers that go into non-traditional fields uh, poorly. And it happens. Uh, you know, you get the old boys club type thing, or you get the old girls club in other uh, fields, and it, uh, it causes problems, and it makes people not want to go... The people that are on the cusp of picking that outlier direction want to go into a more traditional direction. And those are the people that can be swayed, but that's not the majority. They're already the people that are almost on the outlier, uh, almost the outliers, they're almost on the edge of going in that direction anyway. They're the ones that can be swayed, but they're a small portion of the population. But if we want to change things, it's those people we have to convince. And that means no artificial barriers. Um, 
that said, we shouldn't be dumbing down fields or, or, uh, or what have you just to make them more attractive to get people to pick them. Uh, if there's something that is critical to the field, uh, you know, critical to the work to make it function properly, then we can't be watering that down just to get more women or more men in a particular field. Uh, in nursing, you have to have a particular nurturing nature. That's the whole point of it. Uh, in uh, science and uh, technology, you have to have a much more analytical approach because that's how it works. So you can't be uh, using touchy-feely processes to do scientific research. It doesn't work. Um, and and uh, purely analytical approaches to nurturing and care also don't work. So there you have it. Um, anyway, my point is, uh, and I've gone way off the off the point here, I think, is that we should be striving for equality of opportunity, not equality of outcome. All affirmative action nonsense should be stopped immediately. It does not help. It, it will not achieve a useful goal. It may achieve the equality of outcome goal, but that's dubious. I think it won't, and it'll just cause trouble along the way. It will not achieve any useful goal. Aiming for equality of outcome is not a useful goal because that's going to lead to homogeneity. It's going to remove the variation in viewpoints and so on that is so critical for getting to new understandings of things. And it's also critical for complicated problem solving because one viewpoint might allow a person to see a solution that the prevailing viewpoint that everybody else has don't, doesn't see. That's how paradigm shifts happen. So the laudable goal is equality of opportunity. And we should try do our damnedest to remove any artificial barriers to any particular uh, uh, path of study or career path or life path. Uh, and that's a, actually a difficult problem uh, because we live in a world with limited resources, but it is, in fact, what we should be striving for. Uh, remove the artificial barriers. Remove the, and that is societal barriers, that is uh, institutional barriers, but don't try to force equality of outcome. If there really is uh, a, a, an e equal outcome, uh, um, what's the term? Uh, if it really can stabilize with equal outcomes, then it probably will if you remove the artificial barriers. If there really is no difference, then your equal outcomes will happen. But if there is a difference, trying to force an equal outcome is not going to be beneficial. And you, and, but what you do want to do is have, have, it, uh, have the... Uh, say it's men versus women in a particular position, you want to have that, that percentage of men and women match the real percentage of the men and women interested and capable of doing those positions. And this is what it will stabilize to if you remove all artificial obstructions for doing it. Now, there are, of course, things that make this more difficult. The obvious biological differences between men and women, child rearing, whole bunch of things like that. And that is a difficult problem all on its own. But if we would recognize as a society that there are differences, I think we'd have less trouble even with that. Anyway, that's a long enough ramble on this, this topic. Uh, 
I'm sure there are lots of other uh, commentators that have said uh, said things much better and have evidence and everything, and I invite you to look for them. But for now, uh, that's all on this topic. If you want to be notified of future videos, uh, make sure to subscribe and also enable notifications. If you uh, liked the video or you didn't, leave a like or a dislike. Apparently it helps with exposure. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.